We didn't have much. There were a ton of us. There were so many of my siblings and, you know, not to mention cousins who always came over. Everyone kind of crowded around my mother. Wherever she was, that's where the family was. She was the glue that kind of held everything in place. I was eight years old and I just came back from school. I was with my dad for uh, the week. I came in and he said, Dar, come in, sit down, I have something to tell you. I sat down, he just looked right at me and said, your mother's dead. From that moment, it felt like everything had changed. I didn't know what I was gonna do in the next five minutes, let alone what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. How do you break news like that to an eight-year-old that his mom just died? I had six brothers and sisters, but I grew up as an only child because we were pretty much separated, because it was just me and my dad. We had a really good relationship. Uh, he'd play games with me, watch movies with me. We had a lot of the same interests. For the longest time, I didn't know that my father was an addict. I was too young to really understand when I'd noticed, like, you know, the alcohol. I was too young to understand, like, what, what it was actually doing to him. This kind of grew from bad to worse, from lying. He had stolen money from me. Our rent money started not going to rent. Just wasn't going to work because it was too high or hungover from the you know, night before. I actually ended up getting a job as a busboy when I was 13 and to help pay for rent. I couldn't trust him. I couldn't depend on him. It got to a point to where like me and my dad were separated, to where I was like crashing on a friend's couch. I felt more at home living with friends who accepted me and said, no, no you're, not, you're not gonna live in a homeless shelter. You're gonna stay with us. I was born with Libra's congenital amaurosis, stigmatism, stagnus. Can't see as well as anyone else, and I'm not going to be able to. Glasses and contacts didn't help, although we went through, I don't know how many pairs of glasses. Not a lot of the teachers knew about it or knew how to deal with a situation like that. And I can't see the board, so I can't like really write anything or copy off the board. In the schools I went to, I'd get teased and bullied. I'd get weird looks because my eyes would shake. Well, that was in this whole other category of this like weird person that you know no one really wanted to hang around. Everyone wanted to make fun of, make jokes, laugh at. High school. Completely new experience. Still didn't have very many friends, but I wanted to go out for a sports team. My cousin had wrestled. I knew he was on a wrestling team, so I just wanted to go kind of check it out. Went down there and the coach just kind of looked at me like, oh, you kind of, kind of strong looking. He kind of like starts poking me in the chest. He's like, how'd you, uh, would you like to come out for wrestling? I'm just like, nah. It's like, I'm a flexible guy. You know, just stay for one practice, see if you like it, and if you do, come back. So I decided to stay and whatever happened or clicked that night, clicked hard because I fell in love with the sport instantly and I came back and I kept coming back. I completely found a passion for the sport. I started to form bonds with some of the guys on the wrestling team. Guys ended up becoming so close they ended up becoming brothers of mine. As the season started to kick up, I had lost my first match. I guess I didn't care as much as I really thought I did, but I was still enjoying myself. Still loved the sport, still loved the camaraderie, still loved being around all the, all the guys and hanging out. Then I had won. I had won my first match in my first tournament. Felt like my life started all over again. Felt like, like I completely disposed my old habits, my old ways, my old identity, and just recreated this new one because all of my life I felt like I was on the losing end of a battle. And when I realized that I could win in wrestling, once I realized I could win on the wrestling match, I realized that I can win in life. And that was the, one of the biggest turning points in my entire life. If I'd have made that decision to do drugs and alcohol, I would not have been living a full life. I would not be around the people that I'm around today. I would not be, I would not be happy. I'm at a point in my life where I'm happy. You know, I'm not in poverty. I'm not stricken by poverty anymore. I'm not the self-conscious kid that I used to be. And I really enjoy spending my time helping others. It's, it's what, I feel like my calling is what I'm going to continue to do for the rest of my life. If it was even possible, I'd go to every single school and personally meet with the kids and personally talk with every last one of them and just to share their stories and understand their lives and just to know what they're, what they're going through. That's just part of my natural high. It's not only helping others but hearing stories and talking to people, finding out that we're all the same. A lot of stories are so relatable. Everyone has a Me Too moment. 
no matter who you are or what you're going through, there's always someone that can really understand. It really helps you focus on your similarities instead of standing on your differences. My name is D'Artagnan Crockett. I'm a judo athlete, and my natural high is helping others. What's yours?